Hello. Hello, Carlos. <clears throat> Interesting question you have there. Yeah. About the atheist. Um, whether you're talking to an atheist or you're talking to an idolater, meaning most and for all a sodomite. Yeah. Because you bring up the homosexuality, which I call sodomite. <clears throat> you know, for that, uh, are you familiar with Romans 1? Yeah. Have you read it and understood it? That, yeah, that uh, it's a sin to uh, be uh, having immoral, immoral sexual relationships with the other guy with the same gen with the same gender. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's with another guy or if it's with another woman. It counts yeah. for men and uh, women equally. Yeah, yeah. The point is, and that is made in Romans 1, why that is in the world. That's why I'm asking if you know Romans 1 and understand it. <clears throat> Look. I, I only understand it that... It's talking about that homosexuality. Yeah, just, just, um, just have a look at it. Do you have the, uh, your Bible open there? Online uh, or real, uh, real Bible, whatever? Uh, I'm getting it. It's right here. Okay. Open Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. There we go. There we go. It's not necessary to read the whole chapter. Yeah, I know. Even though, even though it is very interesting to read the whole chapter. But <clears throat> when we start at verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, <clears throat> being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made unto corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves." who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. These, these verses make it absolutely, undoubtfully clear that when you, I don't mean you personally, but a person, Brings down, God, brings down God from heaven and puts him in an idol made by his own like an unclean bird or what else is, uh, does it say here um, to birds, four-footed beasts and creeping things you know, all these idols, all these statues that are made and worshipped instead of God God has a wrath on those people and he gave them up to uncleanness through their lusts of their own hearts, because their own hearts tell them, there is no God in heaven, I will build my own God and worship him, a creature, an idol of whatever, where in the second commandment it is said, don't make any idols, don't make any images, neither from things that are in heaven, on earth, or in the waters beneath the earth. So the Pope wears a fish head, fish out of the water. They made 
in the Old Testament <coughs> a golden calf. They surround their figures with stars. You get the picture? Yeah, I get it. Whenever you defile God in the same way he will defile you. This is why there is not a um, remedy, a healing to be found of sodomy in the world. Because it is a spiritual thing. When, when you're a sodomite and you go to a psychiatrist, he can't help you. Because he does not have the word of God in him. And he does not teach the word of God. He teaches the word of man. And he tries to put you up. And you have to do this. And you have to do that. And you have to think that way. And you have to do that. But we can't do anything out of our own. We can do everything in Jesus Christ. But we can't do nothing on ourselves. You understand that? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So when you have this discussion, just turn to Romans 1, read this to the people, and explain it to them what it means. And when they do not accept God, they will never be healed of sodomy. No man, no woman, nobody. And it's not only sodomy, it's, it's the whole LGBTT agenda, you know? Lesbian, gay, transsexual, bisexual, um transvestite, I don't know, what, 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 intersexual, the whole agenda that is running there, it's all the same. Wrong. It's, it's a punishment by God. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> did, you, did you see uh, the video on my last show on Hour of the Truth? Half of it. No, oh, that's a shame, because in the last part we go into the reading of that book, An uh, Understandable History of the Bible. Oh, I'll check it out. Well, you don't have to check it out. If you want to, we can read it right here. Oh, okay. okay. I, can read it, I can read it to you. I can give you the link. Just give me a second uh, to see where the link is here. You know, I have everything stored up in its place. In its proper place, but sometimes it needs a little time to work on that. So, um, the link is here. And when you open that, <clears throat> it's opening. Okay. Just this wait. is actually this is actually the first part uh, of, of time trip. So when you scroll out down a little bit, you first have the introduction, and then you have time trip, right? Right. So, if you want to, we can we can read that together. Whenever there's something that you have a question on, just interrupt me. Say comment or question or whatever. Okay. We can read. Yeah, we can read together. Huh? We can read. We can read it together. Yeah. So, imagine for a moment that we are in a different time period. We have gone back thousands of years. There are no cars, there are no airplanes, there are no modern conveniences. We are in primitive times. We take a look around us. There is no Bible. We know nothing about the universe around us. We have no knowledge of God. We don't know how mankind got here. This is exactly how these atheists and non-believers feel. They are lost. They haven't gotten the word of God. Whether they are thousands of years in the past or in this modern world, it doesn't matter. They know nothing about the universe, only that BS that is told them by some scientists, so-called. They have no knowledge of God from all this science. They don't know how mankind got here. I mean, how dumb. Sorry, but how dumb must you be to believe in evolution? Really dumb. Yeah? Yeah. There's a lot of people at school that believe. I mean, there's believe. so many, so many things about evolution. I could go right now into this, you know. This is even... Uh, just give me a second here. This is even maybe some, some better way to, to, to start this. Because there are some questions on evolution 
that when you just read this, when you just understand this, this is, I, I just have to find this, you know, this, um, well, my computer is working slowly. And, uh, no presser. Huh? No presser. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, where is that somewhere? I guess it's in another folder. I have to look up the folder. Oh, yeah, the computer is so slow because I got a, I got my CC cleaner up some days ago and then he always does that. He always takes time to load all the pictures. I have about 2,000 pictures in these two folders that I always use for my videos and sometimes I forget where they are and I have to look it up. I only have like um, 15 oh. pictures. How many? Fifteen. Ah, okay, I got a little more. <laughs> a little more. Yeah. Uh, why is that? I don't know. It has to be in the other folder. I'm just going to do with the search. Just give me a second. Evolution. Evolution problems. Well, this is very interesting. Uh, just when you think about that. The chicken or egg dilemma. You know, the question, what was there first? The chicken or the egg? This question has plagued philosophers for centuries. The Bible states that God created birds with the ability to reproduce after their kind. Therefore, the chicken was first, with the ability to make eggs. Yet evolution has no solution for this dilemma. That's one of the problems. Uh, there are a lot of other things. Um, you can send me the link. <clears throat> well, I can send you the picture if you want to. But yeah, send me the picture. Yeah, yeah just, just wait the same. Because it's, it's taken out of a video, you know. For example, sexual promiscuity is dangerous to your health, as you can read in 1 Corinthians 6.18 and Romans 1.27, which we just studied. The Bible warns that he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body, and that those who commit homosexual sin would receive in themselves the penalty of their error. Much data now confirms that any sexual relationship outside of holy matrimony is unsafe. And that's why you have diseases like AIDS and all that stuff. Yeah. But a very, uh, very powerful point, I think this, is reproduction is explained. In Genesis 1.27 through 28 and 2.24 and Mark 10.6 through 8. While evolution has no mechanism to explain how male and female reproductive organs evolved at the same time, the Bible says that from the beginning God made the male and female in order to propagate the human race and animal kinds. You know, this is something evolution never touches. Animals and people are created male and female, are, are male and female. And from the beginning, how did evolution make two different genders perfectly working from the start? They cannot explain that, you know? Exactly. They can absolutely not explain that. Yeah. Okay, but we're going back to the book reading here. We know right. nothing about the universe around us. We have no knowledge of God. We don't know how mankind got here. You know, this is what I think a lot of people felt. You know, the world started with Adam and Eve, right? Right. And when they, when, when, when Eve bore Seth, the third son, after Cain slew Abel, Abel was dead, Cain was cursed out, Seth was the third son, and afterwards Adam got an, a lot of other children, a lot of other boys, a lot of other girls, and they married yeah, their brother and sister and got children and got children and all that. That's the way the world started. And as God told them, they went out into the world and subdued, uh, subdued the world. They were never meant to be in one place. That's why we had later on the Tower of Babel, where the devil said, well, let's all make one. 
And God came down from heaven and said, look, man is, uh, man is to become one. And he confounded the languages and founded the nations in that time. It was always God's will that people spread out all over the world. But when you spread out over the world and you leave your family where you come from and you go into the wilderness or the unexplored part of the world at that time, whatever you want to call it, and you are raising up another generation because you're getting children and children and these children get children and children and you have a big family and whatsoever, the word of God gets, the, the word of God gets lost. A lot of these people must have felt at that way. Okay, there is no Bible. They know nothing about the universe around us. We have no knowledge of God. We don't know how mankind got here because it wasn't told them perfectly. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm quite sure that when you were a child, um, that you did a game on birthdays or whatever with other children. Uh, we call that, uh, over here, we call that silent message. You know that? You are sitting with ten people in a row, and the first one whispers into the ear of the second one a sentence. And the second one gives that to the third, and the third to the fourth, and so on, until the last. What comes out, what tells you, what, what the tenth person, when he said, okay, I just got told this and this, this has nothing to do anymore with your original sentence that you put into the ears of the second person next to you. You know that game? Yeah, I know that game. Okay. Is that right what I just said? Yeah. Right. Now, when you put that in the real life situation, you got exactly what the writer is talking about here. Because the word of God got lost during the generations, like, like it is today. When for two generations the word of God is not taught, the people become apostate. That's how the American nation got from Protestantism to Catholicism at the moment right now. That's exactly how. Okay? Yeah. So, I'm going to continue reading now, but keep that in mind that these are already very powerful arguments to tell to an atheist or even a Catholic about their wrong conception of the world. Okay, continue. Or, or do you have a question? No, uh, keep going. Okay. Then we look again. We see a seed fall from a tree and from the top of the soil plant itself, tend to itself, raise itself up, rise itself up into a seedling and mature into a tree, only to repeat the cycle all over again. And we wonder. And then we go to the ocean. We study the tides and discover that they are used to clean the waters, making it impossible to support life without them. We look at ourselves. Was this planned? We look beneath the surface of the water to the depths below. We find life. Strange creatures. Some which breathe water and some which breathe air, like us. Some that spawn eggs. Some that give birth to living young. We see creatures of all different shapes and sizes. Some are very small, some are so huge that they weigh many tons. Some go fishing with the worm attached to their own fishing pole. Some have no eyes, some have their eyes out on stalks. Some carry lights with them, some move very slow, some dart about almost too fast for our eyes to follow. Again, we wonder, how did this come into being? Then we look overhead. We see the birds. They fly yet are never taught. They move through the air with grace and precision. Their bones are hollow to give them the light weight suitable for flight. Their feathers all grow in the right places. They migrate to the same place every year. They possess innate abilities and characteristics required for their survival. And again we wonder, could this just happen? And then we look at ourselves, at our bodies. We study the intricacies of, our, of the eye and how it works. Have you ever stood still at the wonder that the human eye is? Yeah. Have you ever asked yourself how this complex organ could have been developed by evolution? Yeah. I think that someone who is really serious 
has to come to the conclusion that evolution would never be possible to develop an organ that complex and perfect working like an eye. When you consider everything, how the light has to go in there and has to be translated into electric pulses that are taken up by the brain and then translated into pictures that we see, because our eyes don't see, it's our brain that sees. It's, to me, it's, it's, it's just fascinating just, just to think about it. We examine the complex mechanisms of the ear. We marvel at our ability to keep our balance, to speak, to walk. We look at the heart, that marvelous muscle whose valves know when to open and when to close. It starts functioning without our help and stops itself in spite of all we can do to prevent it. We look to the nervous system and the brain. How did all of this come about? Was it created by accidents? We put forth our questions to our contemporaries, and they have no satisfactory answers. That's exactly what you do when you marvel with, about these things with an atheist. Ask him these questions, and you will get no satisfactory answer, satisfactory answer just like the author writes here. Now, where is God? Is there a being greater than we are? One who made all of these marvelous things that we have looked at? If there were a being greater than we, where would he be? We look to the ground. No, he's not here. We scan the ocean. He's not there either. For both of these are limited, and they could not contain so great a being. Anything that could create the marvelous works that we find all around us could only come, and we look up what? from the seemingly unlimited sky. So we look to the sky. Is there something up there? Something that's watching us even now? Something that created this whole universe and set it in motion? But wait. If there's something up there, if there's a supreme being, he must know us. He must know what is happening on this earth. He must know our problems and have the answers for them. And if this is so, and he sees our helpless state, he is indebted to us, his creatures. As our creator, he must help us with our troubles, assist us through this life, and see, it, see to it that we find a way to reach him. He must communicate. If there is a God that creates the heaven and the earth and mankind and all the animals and everything around us, and he made man, quote-unquote, intelligent. Yeah? Yeah. Because man is the only, quote-unquote, animal, just to speak from the perspective of an evolutionist, man is the only, quote-unquote, animal that can think for itself, that can make decisions for itself, that has nothing to do with instinct, nothing to do just with survival instinct, by hiding when you see an enemy or go after something to eat when you're hungry or whatever. These are primary instincts. Man is the only quote-unquote animal on the earth that has the ability to think, to invent, and even to make things, to create and produce things. The only thing an animal creates is a nest where it can sleep in, like a bird, for example, or dig a hole in the ground for to go to sleep, whatever, things like that. No animal is building a house. Of course, you have ants who have a big dung, <laughs> how do you call that, a dunghill that they make where they <laughs> live in. <clears throat> but that's not the same as men building houses, right? It's not the same. They have no means of transportation, like man has bicycles, cars, planes, ships, motorcycles. You know? Yeah. This is where man is different from all the animals. So man is not an animal in the first place, but this is where man is made different of this. Now, <clears throat> when God created us, and he put us here as thinking, quote-unquote, animals, 
He knows that we run into trouble thinking about the things, where do we come from, why are we here, and where are we going? I mean, these are the three main questions. These are the three main questions mankind is asking himself. Where do I come from, why am I here, and where am I going? Right? Right. Well, all these answers to these three questions are written in one book. It's called the Holy Book. Because Bible is just another word for book. The Holy Book, the Holy Bible. Everything is written in there. It says where we come from. God created the heaven and the earth. In six days he made the heaven and the earth and everything that is in it. He made all the animals. He made all. He made man. Right? Right. And he gave us a law to obey that when we obey his law, we will get to eternal life. That's why we're here. We are here to obey His law. Our life here on earth is a test. A test that God puts us through to see if we are worthy of eternal life. So where are we going? Well, after we die, as the Bible teaches we go to sleep, there will be a resurrection. And we have the possibility to go into eternal life by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Repent of our sins and try to keep His law and commandment. It's so easy. Those three questions are answered in less than five minutes with clarity. But only with the Bible. When you do not have the Bible as your basis of authority, you can't answer these questions. Like you cannot answer the questions of the evolution. Right? right, right. Uh, are you with me? or? Yeah, I'm with you. I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm hearing everything you're saying. <laughs> now, it's not that you agree about it. It's, I, it's, I hope well, that you so understand well, it and that, yeah. you, and that it helps you when you want to communicate with those people. Yeah, I agree and <clears throat> I understand it. Yeah. Okay, fine. So, any more questions, or shall I continue? You shall continue. Okay. Next point is called the communication. We can call to the heavens. We can climb the mountains in an attempt to be nearer. We can pray. But in all of this, we can only send words in one direction. He must communicate with us. He must send words to us. He must establish reliable communications with us. But how? Suddenly it happens. As we walk down the road toward home, far down in the distance we see a figure. That figure is shouting and causing a stir. He has an air of excitement about him. As we draw near, we can hear him shouting. And as we get closer, we can still make out what he is, uh, we still, uh, as we get closer still, we can make out what he is saying. Make stray the way of the Lord. We stop him. Uh, what did you say? Make straight the way of the Lord. Who is the Lord, we ask? The Lord, the Lord of heaven. Of heaven. Quickly we glance up. He has sent someone. We must find out more. Tell us more about this Lord, we ask. The Lord God of heaven. The creator of the universe. We look to the heavens again. We fall on our knees. God has communicated. We grasp this figure. Tell me, tell me of this God. Tell me of this creator. Tell you? You have no need that I tell you, for it is written right here in this book. For if all you ever knew about God was what I said, there would be no way to verify it. But if God is God, he must put his word in writing, so that we may have it long after his prophets are gone. Then he pulled from his belongings a volume of a book. We look at it. Writing. Our God writes. How did these things come to be, we ask? Holy men of God wrote as they were moved by the Holy Ghost, he replies. Now we hold in our hands communication from our Creator. He has spent time and space and worked through men. He has communicated. He had a message for us, but did not keep it locked in heaven, for he sent it to earth. 
He has sent that message in plain black and white so that we could keep it and study it. His obligation was to communicate. Our obligation is to accept that communication. Very, very, very important. His obligation was to communicate. Our obligation is to accept that communication, to read that communication, to obey that communication. Without that communication, we have no connection to this God, who is the creator of the universe. If these are not his words, we have no hope. We have known that he existed for so long, but now we hold in our hand his word. He has communicated. Any questions so far? No. I think it's quite self-explanatory, right? All right. Now we meet the questioner. But wait. No sooner do we acquire this precious communication than a shadowy figure arrives on the scene. Yea, hath God said? That isn't the word of God. That only contains the words of God, that only holds his thoughts, not his very words. Oh, there may be a few fundamental doctrines that you can pretend to believe, but surely you don't believe that these are God's very words? Don't be a fanatic. Settle for just a few accurate passages. Now we find ourselves shocked. Our newfound faith assailed. Our confidence shaken. Then our true prophet explains, listen, he is an unbeliever. He does not believe that God has the power to write this book perfectly, and even worse, he is struck with fear when he discovers anyone who does, so he tries to destroy their faith in it. Why doesn't he just give in and believe it, he asks. Pride, explains our prophet. Wow. Pride. Isaiah 14, how art thou fallen from uh, from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Isaiah 14, open up your Bible. Isaiah 14, verse 12, I'm assuming. Isaiah 14, verse 12. My mom's calling me. My mom was calling me. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to text mess- message her real quick. Okay. Do that. I'm back. Okay. Isaiah 14, verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, How Lucifer? art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart... I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. The five eyes of Lucifer in Isaiah 14, chapter 12 to 14, is pride. I, 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 I. Today it's all around the world. Wherever you go, it's all about me, me, me. Right? Right. It's never about Christ. It's never about God. It's never about the community. It's never about your neighbor that you are supposed to love. It's all about me, me, me. Where does that come from? Well, from Lucifer. When he was still in heaven called Lucifer, when he was cast down on earth, God changed his name into Satan. Now, when we turn to Genesis, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Ye shall hath, uh, ye hath got a God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Stop. Don't butcher that sentence. And he said, the serpent, and he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said? What did we read in our book here? 
The questioner, what does he say? Yea, hath God said? He ha- hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, wait. Back to the book. The questioner. Oh, oh the book. Sorry. Yeah, the questioner. What we just oh, read. Oh, sorry. All right. When you go to the questioner, but wait, no sooner do we acquire this precious communication than the shadowy figure arrives on the scene. Yea, hath God said? That is it. That Genesis isn't the chapter word of God. three verse yeah. one. Yea, yeah. hath God said? That isn't the. Uh, that's, that's the same oh. thing. Uh, who is the serpent? That's Lucifer. That's Lucifer. That's the devil. That's Satan. Not Lucifer, Satan, because he was on yeah. the earth at that moment. <clears throat> God changed his name. God changed the name from Lucifer when he fell on the earth. Uh, like Jesus said, uh, behold, I saw Lucifer falling down from heaven as a, uh, as a, uh, uh, what is it, um, flesh of light, something like that. Right? Right. Well, when he came to earth, he was Satan. Lucifer was the name that was given to the created angel in heaven. Lucifer is a created angel by God. He was the chief of all the angels. He was the most beautiful, the most intelligent. He had all the music, he had all the knowledge. He was the chief angel. And then he came unto Isaiah 14. I will exalt myself above the Most High. I will sit in the congregation of the North. I, I, I. That was pride. And then he was on earth, and he was a serpent. And he came to the first woman on the earth. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said? Exactly what the questioner does. Yea, hath God said? Questioning the authority of God. And that's how they work. That is how he works. That is how Satan works. That is how Satan works through the Pope, through the Roman Catholic hierarchy, through the Jesuits. Question, question, question. Question the authority of God. And by that, implanting doubts in your mind to turn from him who you can see, who you can touch, to something that you can see, that you can touch, that you can hear, idols. You get it? Yeah. It's so subtle. And on the other hand, it's so simple to view through. Pride explains our prophet is the reason why he doesn't just give in and believe it. Because he's proud. Okay? Yeah. So we have our first encounter with the adversary here in this part of the book. Any questions? Any comments? No. Okay. Now sorry back for, home. Yeah, sir? Uh, sorry for butcher, uh, butchering that first. Uh, it's it's no problem. I'm just <laughs> I'm just so loaded up for the moment. I'm so passionate about that. I read it in this in another way. And when you have the right intonation, it sometimes works better within yourself. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But now we are transported back to our present day. Times and surroundings have changed. The tattered old volume we held in our hands has become a black leather covered book with gilt edged pages and. Two precious words printed on the cover. Holy Bible. Our prophet now stands before us, a look of determination on his face. He speaks. This is the Bible. This is God's word and God's words. Believe it. Read it. Practice it. This book will lead you. Very important. The Bible is our guide, our guide through life. Tells us where we come from, tells us why we are here, and tells us where we are going. It will lead our ways. It will strengthen you. It will empower you. It is God's word. We open it up and look gratefully at its pages. It's so easy to read now, so orderly, the word of God. My, how he must love us to have written all of this. 
My, what power he must have to have brought it through a history that has always been hostile to it, preserve it perfectly, and put it here in our hands. You know, Walt made a very interesting point on the last broadcast on Hour of the Truth that I asked you if you saw that last week when I started reading this book, before I read it. He asked me the question, which I quite didn't understand, but that was because of the way that he asked the question. He said, what does Guy Fawkes and the Bible have in common? Hmm. Yeah, I was struck the same way that you are probably right now when you hear that for the first time. I mean, what kind of a question is that? I just didn't understand this point. But when he explained it to me, he explained it better than he asked the question. Of course, then it was absolutely perfect. It was absolutely 100% correct. Guy Fox is the guy who got arrested for the gunpowder plot. You know of the gunpowder plot? Yeah, the plot fifth, to kill King James. 5th fifth, fifth of November, 1605. 36 barrels of gunpowder hidden in the parliament to blow up the Protestant government of England, including the king at that time. Now, what do Guy Fawkes and the Bible have in common? It was the hand of God that prevented Guy Fawkes to have success with his blow-up idea. Because if Guy Fawkes had success, blew up the parliament and the king in 1605, there would not have been a King James Bible authorized version from 1611. Because that king would have been killed in 1605. Get it? Yeah. That is how God works. He is in charge. He is sovereign. He leads it all. He leads the good things and he lets the bad things happen. Why? Well, if you want to know why he lets the bad things happen, read Romans 1, where we started our little discussion with. All right? All right. So, any more questions or shall I read the next little paragraph? Continue, please. Now the questioner returns. Suddenly someone speaks. Yay! Has God said? What? We look up. He's a fine-looking man, well-dressed and obviously quite educated. Now, this is absolutely a reference to all the people that we look up in our lives. It starts with the teacher in our school. It goes on with all people of so-called authority. Think of politics. Think of people in the hierarchy of the church that we visit. I mean, I don't visit. I never went to a church, but most of the people do. They're all fine-looking men, they're all well-dressed, and obviously they are quite educated. I hate to disillusion you, but actually that is not God's word. That only contains a mere translation of the word of God, and a poor one at that. Oh, you can find the fundamentals in it, but surely you don't believe that those are God's very words? Please, your lack of proper education is showing. He is obviously quite educated and accusing us of lack of proper education because we believe in the simple, inerrant word of God. Don't be a fanatic. Ha! What are all the laws written today when you are a fundamental Bible believer? You're a fanatic, you're a terrorist. Settle for a few accurate passages, but don't be a fool and hurt the cause of Christ by saying that God preserved his very words. Grow up! Now we find ourselves shocked. Our faith is being assailed. But wait a minute. As our verbal intruder walks away, the lesson that we learned earlier strikes home. Wow! Those unbelievers are everywhere. 
we say to our prophet with a sigh of relief. And this, Carlos, is exactly what almost every time when I have contact with you on Skype you tell me. Those unbelievers are everywhere. I had a discussion with an atheist, I had a discussion with a Catholic, I had a discussion with an apostate Protestant. Isn't that what you tell me all the time? Yeah, that's true. Oh, those unbelievers are everywhere. They certainly are quick to try to destroy a person's faith in the Bible. I hope he gets saved someday. That's what I what say. Do you mean? What do you mean, replies our prophet? That guy was a Christian. He was a college graduate. He believes that God wrote this book perfectly a thousand years ago, a few thousand years ago. But he doesn't believe that God had the power to preserve it through the centuries and give it to you and me perfectly in English. What's worse yet, he is struck with fear when he finds someone who does, so he tries to destroy their faith in it. But why doesn't he just give in and believe it? And the answer right. is pride. Pride. Yea, hath God said? But this little introduction is so powerful when you take your time and read it with an open mind like we just did. So, I really think it's going to be a long journey reading probably all of that book on Hour of the Truth, but I can't wait to start. Because when I see how this is written, and in what simple words it explains to us how simple belief can be, it's everything, everything the Roman Catholic Church The Jesuits and all the educational system doesn't want us to believe because, you know, for things to make reason in their world, things have to be complicated. And the more complicated, the better, because then you just don't see through it. But the Bible is written for a fourth grader to understand. The King James Bible is not the other Bibles. So I hope I answered a little bit of the questions that you had on your discussions that you encountered with the atheists today by reading a little bit of Isaiah, the introduction of this book, and Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Don't, don't thank me. I love to do this. This is the work that God called me out to do. I could tell. I'm happy if I could be of any assistance to you. And by that, helping you for others to do the same.